Thank you very much, Torben. And so we are now at the last segment, which is uh, questions ex auditorio or from the audience, which oh, yeah. is not in the <clears throat> auditorial. Um, so uh, I'm, I have one question from the virtual audience that I'm going to do first, and then I'm going to see if there are any questions here in the room. Um, and the question is from uh, Maze Ohala at the IT University. Um, who asks, um, based on your PhD research, uh, what do, where do you imagine that uh, your research would go? And that means both what you might think uh, would happen and what you think ought to happen. And, and Masa says, I'm looking for instructions here for those of us in the audience of this defense and for the readers of the dissertation, as well as what you intend hopes for yourself and for the work uh, that you've presented today. What is your informed view of what we could, should have more of, and also less of in academic research and or in STS. So that's uh, the sort of the grant program question from a, a, okay. a disciple at ITU. So I don't think I have a, like, an, a general advice to give to people, right? Everyone is different and you should, I don't know, follow your, um, the things you think are the most productive maybe. Um, I, I just have a few things to say about the, the question of tools we've touched upon a little bit earlier. So we have an issue with uh, instruments. And I want to, for instance, I want to call them scientific instruments. I could call Giphy a tool, it's, it's a, I, do, I do it. But I think it's a better word to say scientific instruments. It put more weight on the fact that these things are part of science. Uh, science is not just writing papers. That is complicated in the way the gamification of the academia, if you want, to make certain things visible. Um, <clears throat> but the, the situation is changing. For instance, you have the Journal of Open Source Software, where you can peer review your code in a very developer-friendly way. Um, but basically, I think that the, the whole battle about that has to be put on the level of the institutions, because a lot of things you can uh, get them from below by yourself, like you can build a brand. There are many things you can do. Like Giphy was mostly produced with zero money. A little bit of Google Summer of Code and a few things, help from eDiaspora Atlas, but for the amount of work, it was mostly uh, just free work from the, the developers. And so money is not the, the core issue, but obtaining a large amount of time in a row to develop a tool from an institution having a place where you can hire someone for a specific need without having to do all the paperwork by yourself. All the, you need some institutional su support sometimes for certain things, not for everything, but for certain things. And open source has always been part of science. It's born in science. It's, it's intertwined with science. And weirdly, it's, it's be becoming disconnected or our scientific institutions don't see the value of that. They need to see it again and to support it again. And it has a lot to do with the way science is sold. So if all the tools disappear and not, are not seen from the, the top of the pyramid, they don't exist. They need to exist for those. And that's deeply embedded in our scientific practices. So the way, for instance, Giphy has a proxy paper. So people cite the paper instead of the tool. And then I, I have a super high amount of citations in the game of science because of that paper. But of course, the paper itself is not, is not right. It's not as if I had that same amount of uh, citations for a paper that is pure content. Well, these dichotomies don't work very well. But what I mean here is that in this case, it was successful, but you can't always make that work this way. In some cases, uh, you struggle at writing a paper. Not everyone was as willing as I was to write papers for the tools. Uh, some of the engineers at the Sciences Po Media Lab don't want to write papers. I did, but they don't, and it's their right. And then how do they do if they don't want to write a proxy paper? Right? Can we cite a tool, and how do we do that? How is it recognized in the academic sphere? There are solutions to that. We can push in that direction, and it's a discussion we must have with the multiple layers of the, the academic life. So the research engineers, of course, but also the many researchers who develop for, uh, yeah. So I want to, I want to go this direction. Uh, I want to push in, in this, and maybe because Giphy has notoriety, it, it can be an example for that, and it will also be a way to improve Giphy again. 
That's my, nice. Might this be a good place to advertise your first um, initiative? Yeah, that's a good place to, to do that. So in the uh, free and open source, um, open source software, what does FOSDEM mean? Uh, developer European meeting. FOSDEM, every year completely free in a uh, Université Libre de Bruxelles, in, in, in Brussels. A very famous meeting in the, in the spheres of the developers. So yeah, a lot of open source developers come there to see the new technologies, the new initiatives and so on. We have created a dev room, a track if you prefer, for science. And we need people to organize it, especially if you have uh, women, because it's male dominated and we'd like to balance things out. Um, but also just come and attend. A lot of very interesting things are being said uh, and shared in that space. That's where I, I learned, for instance, that some computer scientists hide that they code because they think that it is detrimental to their career, which breaks my heart. Uh, these things are true and people have studied that, so that's a good place to gather information and knowledge, build alliances with people to push these things. First, them, the, the dev room is called Open Source Science and Technologies, and it's easy to find with Google. This was a brief discussion, uh, we are very happy. Uh, so let me just read out the, uh, the additional couple of lines that we have added to the preliminary assessment. <laughs> Uh, what we have written is, uh, at the oral defense, June 1st, 2021, Mathieu Giacomi presented his thesis in a very convincing manner, and in the following examination of his research, he successfully addressed the issues raised in the pre preliminary evaluation report to the full satisfaction of the assessment committee. We therefore recommend that Mathieu Giacomi be awarded the PhD degree. Thank you very much. On behalf of the department, I have been tasked with giving you this owl, which apparently wow. is customary uh, to give to PhD students when they finish. And I think it's supposed to be a sign of you having achieved some sort of wisdom. I guess that's when, why the owl is given. I feel in this case, maybe we should keep it. Because maybe, I think you, your PhD experience has been uh, maybe the reverse, you have been teaching us so much about <laughs> visual networks that maybe the hours should stay here rather than go to you. But to keep, in, in keeping with custom, uh, on behalf of the department, uh, congratulations. I also want to say, uh, on behalf of me and your other supervisors, Anna School Madison, thank you for a, uh, a fantastic experience. Uh, we met uh, 12 years ago, I think. Um, while I was finishing my PhD, and you have been basically my supervisor in vision network analysis for my entire research career. So it felt odd having to supervise your uh, thesis, but it's also been a very rewarding experience uh, and a fantastic uh, conclusion today. And finally, I want to say on behalf of the, the laboratory, uh, I think the exchange today, especially about, uh, you know, Technic, weird technical people providing new life to SCS and the call to um, find a way for tool makers to, uh, to uh, cash in on their academic currency uh, embodies everything that the, the tech lab is trying to, to be and I think you have really helped us put, the, put that to the point over the last uh, three years so thank you so much. Thank you very much. And um, this concludes the yeah, yes. I just want to say yes. thank you to all of you. I have the mic. Uh, an amazing team. Thank you to the, the assessment board for all of that, which was not maybe in your comfort zone, at least for some parts of it. Thank you to the audience who stayed until here. I am very happy. Uh, thank you to my co-supervisors. Um, yeah. Let's move on to other things. And for those of you in the audience who are in Copenhagen, that maybe not all of you, but you can go to Wapik. À la vôtre. One, two, one and a half.